I'm calling to order this uh, meeting. This is the 25th in a, uh, legislative meeting of Council Period 20. It's an additional legislative meeting of the Council of the District of Columbia. I'm Phil Mendelson, Chair of the Council. Today is Wednesday, May 28, 2014. The time is 4.10 in the afternoon. We are in room 500 at the Council Chambers of the Johnny Wilson Building. Uh, we are having this additional meeting in order to consider uh, the budget and related uh, measures for fiscal year 2015. That includes a supplemental budget for fiscal year 2014. Uh, we typically begin our meetings with a moment of silence. If we could be reflective for a moment, please. Will the secretary please call the roll? Councilmember Alexander? Here. Councilmember Barry? Here. Councilmember Bonds? Councilmember Bonds? Councilmember Bowser? Here. Councilmember Catania? Here. Councilmember Che? Here. Councilmember Evans? Here. Councilmember Graham? Here. Councilmember Grasso? Here. Councilmember McDuffie? Councilmember McDuffie? Chairman Mendelson? Present. Councilmember Orange? Present. Councilmember Wells. Here. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, because we did not have a committee of the whole meeting last week, uh, there are a few items that are typically not on an additional legislative meeting agenda. They include the filing of committee reports and the Secretary's log of introductions. Uh, with regard to the Secretary's uh, report of um, committee filings, um, I uh, if there's no objection, uh, I will move the um, wave, move to waive the reading of the secretary's report. Is there any objection? All right, the uh, motion passes or is accepted to uh, waive the reading of the secretary's report. With regard to the um, referral of proposed legislation, we have the secretary's log of introductions. I will move that uh, we waive the reading of the log of introductions. If there's no objection, uh, that motion is accepted and the um, reading of the log is waived. We have the ceremonial resolutions. Uh, these are on this agenda in order that at least one or two of them which will be presented can be presented at the June 3rd meeting. Uh, are there any uh, removals from the consent agenda? Mr. Chairman. Yes. May I remove um, item seven uh, just to speak briefly? Do it. Uh, you can't because uh, to remove it from the um, consent agenda means that uh, it can't be considered. That's the rule with regard to ceremonials. I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah, there's no debate on ceremonials. Okay. I'll see if I can find a way you might be able to speak to it. Uh, we have the ceremonials, the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. The ayes have it unanimously. I will turn to the non-consent agenda. If there's no objection, Councilmember Bowser, do you want to speak for just 30 seconds? Thank you. Just 30 seconds, Mr. Mendelson. I, I just wanted to acknowledge and thank all the members of the councils for supporting a resolution in honor of the life of Minnie Green, um, who most here know as a diehard activist in Ward 4, who committed her life to public safety, not in, in just in her Petworth neighborhood, um, but in creating the orange hats patrol all over the city. Um, and no, just apropos of her life, um, there is a, a front page of the Metro section honoring her life, and I just commend that to everybody's attention. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, th thank you, Councilmember Bowser. <laughs> Mr. Graham? In that same vein, I just seconds. want... I want everyone to know that my Chief of Staff, Calvin Woodland Jr., today is celebrating his birthday. So if you get a moment and you see Calvin, who is everywhere in the Wilson Building so often, uh, wish him a happy birthday today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's get to business. Uh, we have the non-consent agenda uh, and final reading and final vote on proposed bills. The first item and the only item is uh, the Fiscal Year 2015 Budget Request Act of 2014, Bill 20-749. Uh, this was uh, approved by us in the Committee of the Whole a few hours ago. I move the bill. Discussion. This is the Budget Request Act. Mr. Chairman. Mr. 
Mr. Bear, uh, Mr. Graham, and then Mr. Barry. Mr. Barry. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Let me put my remarks in context. As you and I discussed, I talked to you for about 45 minutes last night. It was civil, with no screaming, yelling. And I said, Mr. Chairman, why don't we resolve this, some of this now, even with the issue of the tariff cuts, why don't we have a civilized debate rather than kind of stop it and run it a certain way because you disagree with it. And I got the impression that you agree with that. So I hung up the phone. Then another council member called me. I called you back and told you about that which I guess you acted upon, I don't know. And so that's the tone I wanted to set. But when money is taken from human beings, poor people, who have no champion except me and a few others, have no voice except my voice and a few others, I represent a ward which has the highest poverty rate in this city has the largest incarceration rate, all the negatives, all the social behavior, the most special needs children, a disproportionate share of talented people. I welcome those. Now, I don't like everything they do, but I like what they are. They're victims. <laughs> they weren't responsible for being born into poverty. God, uh, someone did that. I think God did it. And they were born into poverty. Their children are not responsible for being born into poverty. And so we ought to tackle this budget, which not, very few of us on the council want to do. Ms. Barnes talked about it, Ms. B Ms. Orange. We want to tackle the tough question of reduction in poverty. We want to tackle those kinds of things at all. And it just bothers me that we can't get, I can't get that kind of discussion. I can't ask a distinguished member from Ward 3 why she put $5 million in the outdoor pool and put zero for anything in recreation in Ward 8. I think that's a legitimate question. I want to ask a distinguished member from Ward 3 why during this whole budget process she didn't talk to me about any project in Ward 8, including the 11th Street Bridge and uh, Park. And I'm just upset that the people of Ward 8 are being disrespected. <laughs> I'm going to make some of the same arguments when we get to the specific parts of the budget that we did earlier. I do it less emotional. But when people hurt people that I love, I hurt too. And I act out that hurt in terms of that. And the people of Ward 8 and low-income communities are hurting every day. I had to try to get up out of the bed to find something to do. Got substance problems got rejection problems, got low self-esteem. That's what we ought to be talking about. And we talk one, one, one specific thing, i wait till we get back to this, is, is the training money. Jim Graham knows that we have some of the hardest working people in terms of trying to get people's jobs. And it's the private sector. Why wouldn't members of the council talk about the private sector? For political reasons? Are they scared or what? It's and so scary. that's the point I would like to make. And I'll wait on some more points to make as other parts of the budget. Because I don't think we can debate this budget as a whole without going into subsections of it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Mr. Graham? Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman? Uh, Mr. Graham? I move that, uh, that $100,000 be transferred from the CCNV feasibility study line item to support the creation of a main streets on lower Georgia Avenue. And I hope this would be accepted on Uh, can the budget director uh, repeat it back, please? <laughs> the amendment says 
to move 100,000 from the DHS CCNV study to feasibility study. Feasibility study. To the uh, Department of Small and Local Business Development Main Street Program for a Lower Georgia Avenue Main Street. Local funds. Um, all right, the uh, budget director has been able to repeat it, and so we know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, if there's no objection, Mr. Chairman, Mr. can Grasso. I ask a quick question? Mr. Grasso is uh, yes, Mr. Grasso. Thank you. I, I was uh, particularly excited about the uh, committee's report when it came out that we were going to be able to do a study on CCNV and what's going to happen there in the next uh, year or so. As you know, the conditions there are deplorable and inhumane and we shouldn't have people living there and therefore it's important for us to move forward quickly with trying to find replacement space and trying to understand what's going to happen over the long run. So through you to uh, Mr. Graham, uh, Mr. Graham you sit on the, uh, I think the committee that's been created to discuss what's going to happen with CCMV. Are you comfortable that only is it $200,000 remaining will permit us to do a sufficient study to make sure that we can move forward quickly with a renovation or change there? I'm glad to note that you're interested in this matter. I we am. haven't had you at any of our meetings or anything, but at some that. point perhaps you will show a greater interest. Mr. Graham. But, but, but there was three, there's $200,000 remaining for the feasibility study, and I'm quite sure that we can continue our task force work the recommendation of which will be received shortly by the council. Thank you. Uh, further on the amendment, uh, again, the amendment is $100,000 transfer from the CCNV feasibility study to DSLBD Main Street program for Lower Georgia Avenue Main <coughs> Street. Mr. Chairman. On the amendment, yes, Mr. Berry. Uh, could I, and I support the amendment, but I'd like to ask the same question that Ms. Garasso asked. Is this sufficient, Mr. Graham? You know I support it. Is it sufficient? The answer is yes. Okay, well, you'll be here to the rest of the year. We'll find out if that's, if that's enough. You know I support you on everything that you do. And, for instance, at CCNV, most of the advocates that I've talked to would like to have three or four smaller men's shelter with, with the bathroom in, in each place so you can do like you do in an apartment building. And that can cost more money than probably anybody wants to spend. There's been some discussions about tearing CCNV down and selling that valuable land to someone, a developer, and take the proceeds to rebuild. So it's a very complicated issue. I appreciate you bringing it, if, and I believe you. If you say it's enough, it's enough for me. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Mr. Grasso. Uh, yes, thank you. I, you know, I, I wanted to note that uh, I've been particularly concerned about this, and last year when I sent my letter to the mayor about the budget, I did raise this point that I think there needed to be work done here because not, not, not enough work had been done to this point. And I've toured uh, the shelter, and I've met with representatives from the shelter ad nauseum. And I can tell you that I don't think $200,000 is going to be enough money to actually do a study. And I think that this would be the wrong time and the wrong place to actually move this money from this effort over to something that I know we've been studying and I certainly support as well. But I think that we should go through the regular process in funding the main streets, and I think that this is not the best way to go about doing it. And so I would object uh, to this money being moved and to this amendment being accepted as friendly in the hopes that we can continue to maintain $300,000 in the budget for the study that needs to be done to move these uh, people forward at the shelter towards a resolution of what's best for the residents there and for the homeless community that's been using that shelter for many years. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. I Chairman. object to it being accepted as friendly. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Graham. Uh, for I, I appreciate the points that, that, that the at-large council member has made, but I have worked for the past eight months, meeting after meeting after meeting, with all the stakeholders involved in CCNV, including the government, the downtown bid, 
the residents most definitely of the shelter. Uh, the CCNV itself, we have expended an enormous amount of energy on this. And what we have done is to assemble a great deal of information, including the legal information on the various property ownerships and the complexities that are involved there. I think we have now a very good springboard in terms of bringing on the highly technical assistance that we need in order to finally finish this particular work so that we will have a very specific property initiative in mind. And so, you know, I, I, I know that there may be questions, but I really think that this $200,000 will be sufficient for those consultants that we need on the complex property issues. We have all the information in place, but we do need to develop that strategy, and I think this will be sufficient. Have on the other hand, developing a main street on Georgia Avenue, on Lower Georgia Avenue, which is something which is very, very important to me, which should be important to the rest of this council, is, is, is something that it really needs the support that this will give it. We will have a much better retail and living environment there with the establishment of a main street. Thank you. Right, we have the amendment before us. All those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Further, all those opposed? No, Mr. Chairman, please record me as voting no on this okay, amendment. Okay, the vote is, um, the, the uh, amendment passes with Mr. Mr. Grasso. Mr. Chair, I'm going to vote no as well. Mr. Grasso and Mr. Wells recorded as no. Uh, further, with regard to uh, the, the uh, Budget Request Act. All those in favor. Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. I can't believe it. In I can't. 10 minutes, 15 minutes on an $11 billion budget. And let me, I have my time on some sections of the budget on the transportation part about the streetcar. A actually, services. Mr. Berry, I was looking at my notes. I have Councilmember Che. Did you want to be recognized? Councilmember Che? No, thank you. All right. Ms. Mr. Berry. Recommend what, what, you, what were you requesting? Uh, Mr. Berry. What were you requesting to Ms. Che? Um, I, didn't, I didn't hear it. I have a lineup. And she was next in line. Oh, I see. She's declining to speak. I'm recognizing you for two minutes. Recognizing I have multiple statements and several amendments to make. Can you segment it out so I can have them? If you have amendments to make, you should move the amendments. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm not sure I want to make the amendments. I want to have a, uh, I don't know. How, if you don't know if you want to make the amendments, I don't know how to help you. Okay, I make the, I make the uh, the amendment on uh, school boundaries, not boundaries, school populations. And I've talked to Mr. Katang, He's given me a good solution to it, but I still want to debate the question. Can you get passed out quickly on the Budget Request Act? Where would it go? Oh, I thought we had a request. Support Act? Okay, and the Request Act. Let me speak against a number of items. If there's no objection, we will start the clock at two minutes. Mr. Mr. Chair, Barry? my object. Can we have three minutes? Something this serious. Um, Mr. Mr. Barry, members get three minutes the first time they speak, two minutes thereafter. You've already used a minute of your time. Nobody agrees with that. I'm giving you an additional minute, but Mr. You? Barry. I'm trying to be cooperative. So give me three minutes. If there's no I'm objection, sure Mr. Berry will have three additional minutes. Huh? Please set the clock for three minutes. Huh? I object, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Berry, two minutes. Ms. Chairman, I'd like to move the amendment that delays the 41 percent cut of TANF benefits and take six million dollars out of a 20 million dollar increase in, in the budget. I'd like to speak to it after I move it. Mr. Chairman? Do you have it to circulate? It's been circulated, the same one that, that Mr. Graham pushed. Same one, identical. And so, uh, it's identical, the same one that everybody has. The secretary has it. So can we use that? This is exactly the same amendment he made? I'm being, uh, no, you can't. 
Huh? Beg your pardon? Okay. She's circulating it. Stop the clock while she's doing no, it. No, we don't stop the clock. Oh, I see. I'd be glad when the rules come up again in January so we can stop this craziness. Mr. Chairman, it's been spoken to thoroughly. Mr. Chairman, can I get back to my, my, my minute, my two minutes? You have 30 seconds left. Mr. Chairman, you're going to regret this attitude. You're disrespecting the people of Ward 8 of the low-income communities. And so, because there's been an amendment to the Budget Request Act, we have come back to the floor as a bu amended budget. I take my three minutes and speak there. All right? General Counsel already ruled that. Thank you. We have the amendment before us. Uh, this is the same amendment that we debated uh, earlier. If there's no further discussion, we'll just go to a vote. Um, all those in a roll call vote, the secretary will call the roll. Councilmember Catania. Yes. Councilmember Catania votes yes. Councilmember Che. No. Councilmember Che votes no. Yes. Councilmember Evans. Yes. Councilmember Evans votes no. Councilmember Graham. Yes. Councilmember Graham votes yes. Councilmember Grasso. No. Councilmember Grasso votes no. Councilmember McDuffie. No. Councilmember McDuffie votes no. Chairman Mendelson. No. Chairman Mendelson votes no. Councilmember Orange. Yes. Councilmember Orange votes yes. Councilmember Wells. Yes. Councilmember Wells votes yes. Councilmember Alexander. No. Councilmember Alexander votes no. Councilmember Barry. Mr. Chairman, what is the issue? Your amendment. <laughs> yes. Councilmember Barry votes yes. Councilmember Bonds. No. Councilmember Bonds votes no. Councilmember Bowser. Yes. Councilmember Bowser votes yes. Mr. Chairman, there are six yeses and seven noes. The amendment uh, fails. Mr. Berry, do you have additional amendments? No, I'm giving up. Thank you. Uh, if there's no further discussion with regard to the Budget Request Act, all, all those in favor of Bill 20-749 as amended say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it unanimously. Uh, who asks? Who wants to be recorded as no? Voted no. Mr. Wells will be recorded as voting no. Uh, we'll turn now to uh, first reading on proposed bills. And again, this is first reading. Fiscal Year 2015 Budget Support Act of 2014, Bill 20-750. Um, I move the uh, bill. Discussion. Uh, I'm just double checking. Um, I know there's an amendment on the supplemental for 2014. The uh, I don't believe there are any amendments from anybody on this bill, so we'll proceed to a vote. This is the first fiscal year 2015 Budget Support Act of 2014, Bill 20 750. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it unanimously. We'll turn now to emergency legislation. The um, The one item is uh, the supplemental, and uh, in order to consider the supplemental, we have the declaration resolution. I move PR 20-726, the fiscal year 2014 revised budget request, emergency adjustment declaration resolution of 2014. Uh, there are a couple of points I need to make with regard to the underlying bill. I will make them now. Uh, there was an amendment in the nature of a substitute that was filed and circulated yesterday. There is before you um, the amendment in the nature of a substitute. What is before you actually is slightly revised to incorporate changes as requested in the mayor's errata letter that we received last week. 
These changes were inadvertently omitted from the earlier version that was circulated. Specifically, what we have before us is a slightly revised amendment in the nature of a substitute. The first change is striking the proposed local funds addition to three agencies in the public safety cluster. Because the mayor already funded this amount using the contingency reserve fund, he no longer needs us to increase those agencies' budgets through the supplemental. This is explained in the errata letter. Second, there is a conforming amendment adding a $10.343 million repayment to the contingency reserve fund. This was also discussed in the mayor's errata letter. Again, I move the declaration discussion. All those Chairman. On the declaration, Mr. Barry. Mr. Chairman, I know what the emergency is, but I'm very unhappy that people of Ward 8 got shafted this morning, this afternoon. And I represent those persons. I stand up for the people of Ward 8. I fight for them. I've got more schools modernized than anywhere in, 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 in the city. And I don't like when a member of the council discriminates against and disrespects another member who from Ward 8. We had the greatest need in the city on everything, whether it's education, whether it's health care, whether it's uh, recreation, whether it's anything. And any member of the council who takes, who doesn't fund one project of any kind in Ward 8 and takes $5 million to fund a swimming pool in that particular ward. That person also has added money to Hertz Park. $7 million a park over people. That is outrageous. Also, $8 million for competitive yeah, Peter, you read that. $3 million to improve this. But the big item is $5 million for a swimming pool when there's a thousand of young people in Ward 7 and 8, some brother 1, 2, and 6. Dang it. We have three and a half pools in Ward 8. I discussed this with distinguished lady from Ward 3. And so I'm going to vote against the emergency as a matter of principle because things are not gone to right to help young, low income people. They make up a third of the population of this city, and yet they don't get a third of available monies outside of social services and education. And I'm just disturbed that this council will go on record as taking money out of the babes' mouths, 7,000, and then think nothing of it. How, how could you sleep at night You do that? And so I'm happy about it. I'm going to vote against the budget. I know I voted for the budget, but I'm going to vote against this immediate emergency. Thank you, Mr. Berry. Further discussion on the declaration? Uh, we have the declaration before us. Again, this is PR 20-726. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Uh, the ayes have it. Mr. Berry will be recorded as voting no. I move the uh, fiscal year 2014 revised budget request emergency adjustment act of 2014 bill 20-751. It's an amendment in the nature of a substitute. It is the version that is on the dais before us. I explained how it is slightly different than the uh, version that was circulated last night. I won't repeat that. Uh, I move the um, emergency. Councilmember Bowser. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to um, circulate an amendment um, that I would have had a chance to discuss with you, and I hope that you would accept as friendly. Um, it would uh, transfer 2014 fund balance uh, to the D.C. Council um, to be used to procure an uh, independent expert to uh, advise the Council in its analysis of the economic and community impacts of the D.C. Uh, Soccer Stadium Development Act of 2014. 
14. Um, the mayor transmitted this legislation to the council on Friday. Uh, I asked in anticipation of, of that um, action, I asked my cat staff to do some preliminary research on best practices and what other jurisdictions have done in evaluating um, those deals. Um, and we recommend that $200,000 be uh, set aside um, to procure that expert advice. Uh, we know that um, the executive and developers have been looking um, at all of the components of this deal for, for many months, um, and it would behoove the council um, to have um, this ex expert advice as we move forward. Uh, thank you. Um, and I, I think this is uh, important that uh, we take advantage of being able to uh, adequately study this. Um, and the numbers have been worked out with the budget office. Uh, if there's no objection, this will be accepted. Object. For the purposes of a question. Mr. Graham. Uh, I, I understand and I agree with the paragraph B, you know, which would provide us with the technical assistance that we need in order to properly evaluate this measure. I'm just not sure what paragraph A is. So. All right, uh, I have now circulated all of my copies. Let me pardon me? Let me uh, the remaining fiscal year 2014 unexpended revenue of $108 million shall be carried over. Is, is that a, I just, I haven't seen language like that here too before, and I'm just wondering. Um, let me just get clarification. This revenue, because uh, we're only transferring the increase of the council's um, allotted amount, um, and we're using 200000 of that um, for purposes of this study. But what does paragraph A do? Let me Unbalanced, Mr. Graham, that we reduced um, the the first amount that you see, 108, um, by the 200,000. So it's, just so I'm clear, I, I have no no okay. issue. Okay, and with, I'm actually going to ask the budget director to um, to to speak to the first. Why paragraph. do we have to mention the 108 million in order to? Get well, it? we don't really have to mention it, but it's in here. Um, the the operative paragraph is the second paragraph, and the first the intent of the first paragraph is just to explain that it's coming out of that transfer. Yes, I've double checked with staff. I've dou double checked with staff that the dollar amount is correct here. I mean, but are there other things we could take out of that transfer? No. For example, the, the, the guidebooks for Logan Circle, um, Leedroyd, Bloomingdale, uh, and Anacostia are underfunded by $40,000. I mean, could we, and, and this is going to make the difference uh, uh, in that those guidebooks being published, the Heritage Trail guidebooks, and if there was an opportunity for another $40,000 there, that would, uh, that would be very nice. I move that we add the $40,000 for the Heritage Trail. That won't be accepted. The uh, essence of this amendment is to uh, fund uh, our ability to analyze, to do an economic analysis of the soccer stadium development. That's the essence of this. And I think that's important to the council. Well, I think it is important, but I just, this mechanism of this re re recantation, this discantation of, of this unexpended revenue is something new to me. I've never seen this before. So all of a sudden, at the very end of this whole process, we can pull up uh, $108 million and take no. 200000 No, no. We're not pulling up $108 million. What we're doing is from a razor-thin margin, we are putting aside 200000 for the council to do, to do this study. That's what we're doing. And it's not possible to take another forty the hundred and eight for the heritage. It's actually hundred and eight million dollars. The hundred and eight million dollars is necessary to balance the FY two thousand and fifteen budget. But forty thousand dollars for these heritage trail guidebooks that otherwise are not going to be published for Ledroid, Bloomingdale, Anacostia. Do, do, and you know, do you know, Mr. Graham, I think you do wonderful work and I have never heard of these guidebooks until this minute. Oh my god. We, well, and what I would really I'm like sure, to I'm do, sure you're just forgetting them for the moment because I am. there's been an awful lot of discussion and I'd like to forget about them. Heritage Trail I'd like to forget books. them for another moment or two. Um, I, and what I'd be happy to do, Mr. Graham, would be to sit in, in your office and look at the guidebooks and see what you're talking about. You want to look at all? Well, these are guidebooks that haven't been published yet, but there are guidebooks published for DuPont Circle, Adams Morgan, 
uh, and other areas of the of the city. But these are not published yet, so there's nothing really quite to look at. But if we had forty thousand dollars, we would be able to publish them. It just seems like such a small matter in eleven billion dollars a budget, and here's the funds readily available. You won't accept my amendment. For no, the, the the amendment before us is um, Ms. Bowles, Councilmember Bowser's amendment that um, sets aside two hundred thousand dollars for the council to analyze the soccer stadium development. Uh, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it unanimously. Uh, further on the budget, re the uh, 2014 revised budget request. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Orange and then yes. Mr. Um, Mr. Barry. Chairman, I will be voting uh, against the, the supplemental here, and, and I think you know why I've had several discussions with you about the D.C. Film Incentive Fund, a fund that we took from $15,000 to $4.3 million. Uh, you're well aware that we've been in discussions with Scandals, House of Cards, and others about actually shooting in the month of August, and what we're doing today is zeroing that fund. We're taking it from the $4.3 million to $0. So that means after today, there will be no dollars available to pursue uh, these activities that we've been doing for, for a while. I also just want to put on the record because no one is paying attention. I drew this assignment. I have oversight over motion pictures. In 2013, they permitted 304 films. This year, they've only done 89. Last year, they generated $20 million in economic spending. This year, they're only at $2.2 million. We have a major problem brewing here, and no one really wants to pay attention to what's taking place. Now, uh, we continue to, to see some activity. X-Men just shot in D.C. They paid $63,000 for permits for just utilizing RFK Stadium. Uh, I met last night with, uh, his name is George Pelicanus. He's a well-known author. He's written 20 uh, uh, books, all of them based on D.C. He was born in D.C. Uh, uh, Hospital for Women. And he's the one that did The Wire. Actually, he's the writer for the Marion Barry story along with Spike Lee. He wants all this to be done in D.C., and we're sending the signal that we don't want any of these projects. Now, Mayor, uh, uh, Governor O'Malley, just about 60 days ago, he stood up and, and welcomed House and Cards back because they generated 3,700 jobs and $100 million of impact. And the, and the work there is based on an eight-month cycle. Uh, Mr. Pelicanus has indicated that the next House of Cards will be his his um, uh, series called Shogun, which he's executed the contract with HBO, and they want to do it in D.C. Uh, you know, he's he's had great success. He wants to come back. And let me just end by saying his son uh, did Captain America, and he pointed out, like, yeah, we came here, we shot for three days, then they went to your home state, Mr. Chairman, and, and pretend as though Ohio was California and made all, and, and, I mean, it was D.C., and so it's a tremendous amount of revenue that's being generated at the expense of the citizens of the District of Columbia. D.C. will not build widgets. D.C. will not manufacture cars. <laughs> it's all about tourism and services. And the movie industry is a perfect fit. And we are sending the wrong signals. So just wanted to put all this information uh, on, on the record. Uh, I, I think that it's uh, uh, the, the wrong step. Uh, both George Pelicanus and Chris Talavares, they're partners with Ted Leonis and Snag Films. So we've gotten uh, people's attention on this, and they want to do business here, but there's no money uh, in order to get the incentives. 37 states have tax credits. Mr. D.C. had a credit, but we're z after the, everyone votes on this, on this supplemental today, there will be zero dollars in the D.C. Economic Film Fund for the remainder of this fiscal year. Uh, Mr. Orange. Um, yeah, we the, I, I do want to note that uh, you and I have talked. Um, your concern is that the uh, film fund, which had money in it this year, is being stripped as part of this um, supplemental. And uh, as much as I would like to be able to find some dollars to put in the fund, I, I cannot. Uh, but I said to you, and I'm using this occasion here to say publicly, that uh, I will work with you and see if we can work with the administration with regard to some specific filming the projects that you've mentioned and see if we can't um, uh, provide some incentives. So I, I will work with you on that. 
Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, and once again, uh, the, the administration just announced yesterday they're bringing some animated studio coming to town, and they're going to be involved in major uh, uh, I didn't, uh, films. And, and I didn't mean be, to give you another three minutes well, But I'm here. just saying that, that's, that's a great move in the right direction, and that's another signal that D.C. is primed for all this business. And we need to keep moving forward and not going backwards. Um, I do want to, before I recognize Mr. Barry, I do want to note, just because this has come up a couple of times, with regard to um, Department of Parks and Recreation capital funds, for FY 2015, uh, that's next year's budget, of the dollars for the Department of Parks and Recreation, 27% of the dollars are going to Ward 7, and 9% uh, of the dollars are going to Ward 8. Uh, ward no, 3, 8% of the dollars. Ward 6, 11% of the dollars. Ward 5, 24% of the dollars. East of the river is a total of 36%. And west of the park is a total of 8%. Those are the uh, dollars for fiscal year 2015. Uh, and I have the dollar amounts here if anybody wants to. Mr. Berry? Chairman, I support Mr. Orange. He is an expert in this area. He's traveled to New York, traveled to California, traveled to the film festivals and everywhere else and learned something that members of this council ought to learn, that there's money to be made in the film industry. As Mr. Orange pointed out, before I finish, Mr. Orange, how much are we talking about? How much Actually, we're talking about really maintaining something that we already have. It's $4.3 million in the fund. Okay, what, what, I got what it. What we're voting on now is going to zero it yeah, out. I, I got it. And there is seven states, including Georgia. Georgia is a famous for this. They got Tyrell Perry, one of the few black theater houses or uh, complexes in America. Maryland has a fund. Everybody has a fund, even Mississippi, which is considered backward by some people, not me, has a fund. And it's ludicrous that for about $4 million, we're going to throw away the ability to make 20. Mr. Orange gave you the sites, et cetera. So I'm voting uh, no against this amendment, which takes that money out. Thank you, Mr. Berry. If there's nothing further we have before us, the uh, supplemental, that's uh, Bill 20-751, as amended. Mr. Chairman, has the supplemental been amended? Yes. Well, then it's open for discussion. No, you've just spoken. No, David, we, we you please tell him that what I spoke to was an amendment. And no, this you is didn't. A, a there's wait, no amend amendment. Wait a minute. Pending. What's before us is an amended version of the supplemental. Mr. I got, Perry, I, you I just spoke on this. No, I, I got it wrong earlier today, but he's right this time. The, it is an, the amendment was already accepted. It is now the measure. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the overall budget. Mr. Perry, that, that's you right. just this spoke is, on this bill. You will right. not be recognized a second time in a row. But, All those in favor. Well, wait a minute, Mr. Chairman. Can I have an explanation from the general counsel why an amended bill is not on the floor as opposed to the original bill? which we spoke on. Now, why isn't an amendment bill a new bill as such? Mr. General Can Council? Can we cite that in the rules? Robert's rule, anybody up? Sure. Why? Mr. You, you can speak to a measure. You can speak to an amendment. And then when the amendment is accepted, it goes back to the main motion. We know the main motion uh, was spoken on multiple times. And so it's you, you do have an option to speak on the amendment, but that time has passed. And so you've spoken on the main measure, uh, main motion. Do you agree that the supplemental budget has been amended? I have it got amended? Yes. All right, which means then, when you put it back on the floor, the original amendment. But you spoke on, you you spoke minute, on that on, on the floor. You spoke on minute. the amended budget. Wait a minute. If it's an amended budget, it's not the same as the original budget, right? Do you agree? We're, we're on the same page, but the, the amendment was no, come on, earlier. Tell me. As a lawyer, and you're voting on. You're, you're, you were on and you are on the same measure. So you're, you've spoken before and will you, not be recognized will you read it twice. To me in the rules? 
Yes. Mr. Berry, I'm as sorry, the presiding Mr. officer, Mr. I am in Mason. charge of this meeting. Mr. I'm Berry, sorry. the bill was amended by Councilmember Bowser. After the amendment, Mr. Orange spoke. After Mr. Orange spoke, you spoke on the main measure. One you amendment speak sends again. it back to the floor. I cannot speak again. No, I can speak. All those in favor no. of Bill 20 752 we as amended. Now you're being tyrannical. Say aye. 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 All those time. opposed, the ayes have it unanimously. Uh, we have the temporary bill before us, Bill 20 752. May I have that thing? The, um, and I move the temporary discussion. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Berry. Mr. Orange can. Uh, Go before me. Mr. Barry, you asked to speak on the temporary? Yes. All right. Well, you've been recognized for three minutes. I want to speak against it because this has been degrading to the citizens. It's been abominable to taxpayers the way that the majority of this council has acted. They all distinguished, 13 of us. But the way you acted today was not distinguished. When you're taking money out of the mouths of 11,000 children and putting it on a streetcar in the operation part of it, that's crazy. That's inhumane. And so I'm sorry that the members of the council voted for this. I know why. Because, Mr. Chairman, you talk to members, they've told me this, you made deals with them. And that's not right, to make a deal to get a vote. And that's what you did. You made a deal. I'm not going to name any council members because they're honorable people, and they don't want to say that and won't say that because they're afraid they mess up their deal. But you shouldn't use your power, your office, to make a deal for a vote. You know, we talked about pay to play. That's pay to play. As simple as that. You don't, wanna, you don't like it? I'm going to tip, I'm going to spread this all over the city that you, that you threaten council members, you're taking committees away from them or not giving them a committee. You threaten council members by saying, if you don't do this, I won't support that. That's wrong, Mr. Chairman. That's not, that's not good government. That's pay to play. That's pay to play at its best. Got to pay the chairman if you're going to play with him. And I don't like that. And I'm, I'm, my constituents don't like it. The citizens in Washington don't like it. And so I'm going to vote no because of the process. I still have 120 minutes, minute, 18 seconds to expand on this. Mr. Chairman, I have served under many chairmen. I have watched as mayor for 16 years several chairmen, including John Wilson, who was not orthodox the way he did business, but he got things done. I've served Sterling Tucker. I've seen Arrington Dixon. I've seen David Clark. I've seen I've served on Linda Clark. And no chairman in the history of our council has acted the way the distinguished chairman has acted in terms of shutting people off, in terms of making deals. The thing that bothers me the most is the deal making. The deal making. And several council members have told me that I'd I, 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 I like to vote this way, uh, but uh, I talk with the chairman. That includes the distinguished at large member who told me last night that she supported Mr. Graham and myself. Uh, she's on the Committee of Human Services. She voted for it in committee. I can respect Mr. McDuff. Mr. Mr. Berry, your time has that, expired. Well, let me one, one, 30 seconds, Mr. Chairman. There's I no swear, objection. I'll be quiet. 30 seconds. I respect Mr. McDuffie because he's on the committee. When I talked to him twice, he said, I got reservations about this. That's honorable. But when the council member the night before Tells me a lie, Mr. 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 Chair. I, I object to the decorum of um, of this this discussion. All right. 
That's your right to do so. This is a democracy. Well, your 30 seconds have expired, okay. Mr. Barry. I, I agree with that. Thank you. If there's nothing further on the temporary, we have that before us. That's Bill 20-752, and of course it conforms to the emergency. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it unanimously. I do want to, uh, Mr. Barry? No. All right, Mr. Barry will be recorded as voting no. It passes by majority Mr. vote. Mr. Chairman, please uh, record me as voting no on both the temporary and the uh, underlying bill. The, um, the, um, the measure passes, the temporary passes with uh, Mr. Berry and Mr. Orange voting no. I do want to take this occasion uh, because I did, neglected to do this in Committee of the Whole to thank the staff of the Budget Office, the Budget Director uh, Jennifer Budoff, Angela Joyner, who's the Deputy Budget Director, Tom Moore, who's the Budget Counsel, Joe Wolf, who's Senior Capital Budget Analyst, Jonathan Antista, who's Budget Analyst, uh, Randy Powell, Budget Analyst, and Averill Carraway, who's a Budget Analyst. Uh, the Budget Office uh, works very hard to get this budget done, and in fact, uh, we will adjourn this meeting in a few minutes, and the Budget Staff will have to go back to work. Uh, because there's a lot to uh, be done uh, even after this vote to get the um, tables correct and the dollars, make sure that it's balanced. And I believe there's still some issues with the chief financial officer that have to be worked out. But I can tell you that the uh, budget staff was in every day and working a minimum of 12 hours from Friday through yesterday. Actually, that's not correct about yesterday. I think it was more like closer to 20 hours because they were here very late. So I want to thank them for that, their work. Uh, other uh, staff, uh, central staff of the council, including the uh, general counsel's office, because there's a lot of work with the Budget Support Act. So I just wanted to get that uh, thank you in, which I should have done in the committee as a whole. We have one other item of business on the agenda. I believe it will be withdrawn. Uh, it is a motion to override the mayoral veto of the Medicaid reimbursement for chiropractic services. I was informed that Councilmember Alexander, out of whose committee this bill came, uh, does not want to proceed with the uh, override that the issues have been worked out. I left it on the agenda because by being on the agenda, every member had the opportunity to go forward with this. If there is no objection, I assume you want it withdrawn. If there's no objection, it will be withdrawn. And it is uh, withdrawn. Uh, that will conclude the business of this meeting. The time is now uh, 5.02. Our next legislative meeting is next Tuesday, June 3rd. I want to remind members, I can do this, uh, that uh, the deadline for filing notices is this Thursday at noon. I hope all members heard that. The deadline for filing notices is Thursday at noon. Uh, the time is 5.02. This meeting is adjourned.